Hello everyone and welcome to my first ever bookshelf tour. This is a video that quite a few of you have been requesting from me so I thought I would just do it now while you are all interested in seeing all of the books I have on my bookcase. So in this video I'm only going to show you the books that are on this bookcase. Um, it goes all the way down there so you might be here a long time so if you're hungry or thirsty at all please go grab a drink or a snack because this may be quite a long video. I'm only going to show you the books on this bookcase um, in all of my videos. There are also piles of book next to me so I'm going to show you those books in another video coming up this week. So this is only bookshelf books. Um, the books that I have on my bookshelf are either my favourite books or books that are signed or books that I want to keep in some way. Um, maybe when I've read some of them and I find that I don't really like them as much as I thought I would, then they may get relegated to the pile of books or um, they may be put somewhere else in my room. So yeah, because I only have the one bookcase, I have limited space. So I'm going to show you all of the books that are on this bookcase. So as you can see, I also have other things on my bookcase. Um, so I also have obviously my Peter Malloc, Funko Pop, and I also have this little mini Stife teddy bear and that is a bear that I got in the press pack for last year's Stife Christmas teddy bear um, press event that I went to when I was working in, for a website last year. So onto the books behind the Stife bear I have The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy by Douglas Adams. If I move Peter you can also see my beautiful edition of Little Women by Louisa May Alcott. I also have an American hardcover of Don't Look Back by Jennifer L. Armentrout. And then onto the first part of paperbacks, I have a 40th anniversary edition of Tuck Everlasting by Natalie Babbitt. That's a book that I loved very much as a kid. Then I also have, obviously, the Grisha trilogy, Shadow and Bone, Siege and Storm and Ruin and Rising by Lee Bardugo. All those books are signed. I think I've shown you them in videos before. And then I have The Darkest Part of the Forest by Holly Black. And then I have her fairy series, which I'm not sure the name of, but that's Tithe, Valiant and Ironside. And then I have Doll Bones by Holly Black. And then I have a couple of my contemporaries by Holly Bourne and my normal year and the manifesto on how to be interesting. Um, and then I have this little thing of drawing pins that I use for my noteboard, which is right next to the bookcase. So I just keep them on the bookcase. Then I have A Street Cat Named Bob and The World According to Bob by James Bowen. And that is obviously about a street cat who lives in London and he's quite famous in London and I absolutely love reading about him. So that is that. Then on to some taller books. I have Six of Crows by Lee Bardugo, Cold Skull and Cold Town by Holly Black, uh, Magisterium The Iron Trial by Holly Black and Cassandra Clare, and the second book in that series, uh, Copper Gauntlet by Holly Black and Cassandra Clare. And then I have the Christmas Bob book, A Gift from Bob, obviously by James Bowen. On to the next pile, I have Passenger by Alexandra Bracken, The Darkest Minds Trilogy by Alexandra Bracken, The Darkest Minds Never Fade and In the Afterlight, Beauty Queens by Libba Bray, Going Bovine by Libba Bray, Candy by Kevin Brooks, Lucas by Kevin Brooks, Martin Pig by Kevin Brooks, The Long Way to a Small Angry Planet by Becky Chambers, Fat Angie by an author whose name escapes me, but is Charlton Trujillo. I know that's the first name, last name, so yeah. The Perks of Being a Wallflower by Stephen Chbosky. And then I have this little china cat that I found at last year's Birmingham Christmas Market that I went to. And behind the cat, I have my um, Penguin Classic, Clothbound Classics of Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte and Wuthering Heights by Emily Bronte. So that is the top shelf. On the second shelf I have my Alice Funko Pop and behind her I have The Miniaturist by Jessie Burton, my Penguin Clothbound Classic of Alice's Adventures in Wonderland and Through the Looking Glass by Lewis Carroll. And then I have um, City of Bones by Cassandra Clare. I am collecting the mortal instruments in all of these beautiful editions, I absolutely love them. And then I have the Infernal Devices trilogy by Cassandra Clare. Clockwork Angel, Clockwork Prince and Clockwork Princess. And then I have the Hunger Games trilogy by Suzanne Collins. Hunger Games, Catching Fire and Mocking Jay. And then in between these piles I have Worlds of Ink and Shadow by Lena Coakley. This is a book that I got in, 
I think it was in an, an owl crate book recently. So, yeah. In the next pile, I have a self-help book, which is called Be Your Own Fairy Tale. I got this last Christmas and I've been meaning to read through it because I think it's about um, basically not giving up on the whole fairy tale idea of love, but it's learning to live without it and to basically just create it for yourself rather than rely on other people and romantic relationships and things like that so I am looking forward to dipping into it when I kind of feel like I need a boost in that department so yeah and then I have The Secret Fire by CJ Doherty and Karina Rosenfeld and um, that's a signed book so that's why it's there and I've heard good things about that YA fantasy series so I'm excited to get that. Say Her Name by James Dawson, Love Letters to the Dead by Ava Delara. Vendetta by Catherine Doyle. I keep meaning to get the sequel to that. I think it's called Inferno. I know that's a YA retelling of Romeo and Juliet, so I should really like that. Geek Love by Catherine Dunn, which I mentioned in my last book haul. And then I have the Penryn and End of Days series by Susan E. Angel Fall, World After and End of Days. Lord of the Flies by William Golding. Then there's my bookmark collection, which I know you guys have heard so much about, and that's going to get its own video at some point as well. Behind the bookmarks... I also have Pride and Prejudice and Zombies by Seth Graham Smith. Put them back. And then I have the first two series in the Ruby Red trilogy, Ruby Red and Sapphire Blue. There is another book called Emerald Green. And when I read that trilogy, I will buy that so that I can marathon them. Next pile, I have uh, Outlander by Diana Gabaldon. And then all of my John Green books, An Abundance of Catherine's, The Fault in Our Stars, Let It Snow, which is, has stories by John Green, Maureen Johnson and Lorian Miracle, Looking for Alaska by John Green, Paper Towns by John Green, Will Grayson, Will Grayson by John Green and David Leverton, and then obviously my Sherlock Funko Pop. And there is also, for some reason, I'm not sure why it's not with the rest of the bookmarks, but there's a little clip skeleton bookmark, so I'm just going to put that back over there. Then I also have the Half Bad Trilogy by Sally Green, Half Bad, Half Wild and Half Lost. On to the next shelf. There is my Belle Funko Pop there. And then I have uh, Reasons to Stay Alive by Matt ha Haig. I've heard really, really, really good things about that, so I'm excited to dip into that. Then there is my copy of The Complete Fairy Tales by the Brothers Grimm, which I have dipped in and out of. Then there is um, the... To the, All the Boys of Love Before duology by Jenny Hahn and the sequel P.S. I Still Love You. The first book in the Burn for Burn trilogy by Jenny Hahn and Siobhan Vivian. The Unbecoming of Mara Dyer by Michelle Hodkin. The Lonely by Andrew Michael Hurley. The First Bad Man, a novel by Miranda July. I've heard really, really good things about this. I think it came out at some point last year and it's. I think it's become almost like a cult um, favourite already. So... I'm excited for that one. Cujo by Stephen King, Firestarter by Stephen King. Um, there are more Stephen King books obviously coming up in this video but for some reason they're not in this pile. I couldn't fit them in apparently even though there's still space at the top but oh well. I like having space on my bookshelf because it feels like I have room for more books even though I pretty much don't really but there you go. <laughs> Moving on there is um, The Fire Sermon and The Map of Bones by Francesca Haig. Splintered by A.G. Howard. This is a Alice in Wonderland retelling. There's, this is a, a trilogy. I think it's a trilogy, um, but I only have the first book because I haven't read it yet, so I don't want to buy the rest of the books in series. It's really weird how with some series I buy all of them at once to marathon them, and some series I just feel like I don't want to do that. I don't know why, but that's the way it is. On to the next pile. There is To Kill a Mockingbird by Harper Lee, The Shining by Stephen King, Pet Cemetery by Stephen King, On Writing by Stephen King. And then I have three of his Dark Tower books. Um, I have books one, two and six for some reason. Um, I think I found book six for really cheap in the works and that's why I have it, but none of the other books in between. And the reason I'm keeping these is because... Um, when you have all of them they spell out the dark tower across the spines so when I have all of them I may find somewhere to stand them all up vertically so that I have that picture um, so yeah that's why I'm keeping them it's a fantasy series and I don't really like Stephen King's fantasy and sci-fi as much as I like his horror but you know pretty covers mean that you keep books and they look nice so yeah <laughs> then we have um every day by david leviton and then i have the legend trilogy by marie lou legend prodigy and champion moving on i have the glittering court by rochelle mead this is a book i recently got in a fairy loot box 
And then I have my Sam and Dean Funko Pops and this candle with Sam as Jesus on it. I actually got this um, as part of a special supernatural box from a, I think it was a box by a company called Appraising Pages on Instagram. And they did, they were doing a one-off exclusive supernatural box and that came in it and I was just absolutely delighted. I'm going to zoom in on that because he's just gorgeous. I love him as Jesus. It's beautiful. Anyway, moving back onto the books. Um, Court of Thorns and Roses and A Court of Mist and Fury by Sarah J Mars, and then all of my Throne of Glass books, Throne of Glass, Crown of Midnight, Air of Fire and Queen of Shadows. Cannot wait for Empire of Storms to come out in September so obviously that's going to be added to this pile when it comes out. And then behind Sam and Dean I have Shatter Me by Tahira Murphy and the first book in the Vampire Academy series by Rochelle Mead. So that is the third shelf. The fourth shelf, I have the Lunar Chronicles, Cinder, Scarlet, Cress and Winter. I don't have Ferris yet because the the edition of Ferris doesn't quite match the UK editions of the Lunar Chronicles. Ferris is written vertically, like all of the American editions of this book are, and so it doesn't match, and I'm, therefore I'm a little bit reluctant to pick it up. I know that sounds really bad, but I may just get it on my Kindle purely because of the fact it doesn't match. So, yeah, that's that. I'm that fussy about matching editions. It's ridiculous, I know. Then I have I'll Give You the Sun and the Skies Everywhere, both by Jody Nelson. All the Bright Places by Jennifer Niven, Only Ever Yours by Louise O'Neill, Wonder by R.J. Palacio, and the Anna and the French Kiss series by Stephanie Perkins. I also have this little dragon carrying a daisy here, which I got from Querners Crafts. They're a really, really cute UK-based... Um, they're just a little company that make these cute little figures, really. So they've got... Well, she kind of custom makes them, so you have to email her and basically ask what you want based on the options on her website. So, um, yeah, but I absolutely adore him. He's just adorable. I could have had him in lots of different colours, but I wanted him in this mint green colour because I absolutely love that colour. Um, so, yeah, and he's holding a little daisy. He's absolutely adorable. Love him. Um, and then I have this quote that I got recently when I was in Memphis, Tennessee. I got it from the Civil Rights Museum gift shop. Um, you guys can see that in all of my videos. All of these books on this shelf you can probably see in my videos, so you guys know that these books are here. So... Yeah, and then also I have The Queen of the Tearling and The Invasion of the Tearling, Tearling via Erica Jo Hansen. The new one is not coming out until November, but I really, really need it. It's so, so ridiculous. I have them in these tall paperbacks, and I have requested um, from the publisher if I can have an arc of these books, because these books in this edition are quite hard to get hold of. But I got the second one as an arc when it came out last year. So I'm hoping by asking for an arc of the third one, I'm going to get a matching edition. So fingers crossed, because I'm pretty sure these are arc editions. So hopefully if I have them all as arcs, then they will all match. So yeah. Then I have another recently released self-help book, which is Furiously Happy by Jenny Lawson. I've heard really, really good things about this. It's about anxiety and someone's real life struggle with that. Then I have Dumplin' by... Julie Murphy. This was the first, this was in the first Owlcrate that I ever got last year. I think it was in September's Owlcrate box last year and it was really, really hyped up at that point and I still have not got round to it but I have heard really, really good things about it so I will be getting to it this year and letting you guys know what I think of it. Then I have More Than This and The Rest of Us Just Live Here by Patrick Ness. I've read both of these and loved them well. The Rest of Us Just Live Here wasn't really as good as more than this um i only gave i think i only gave three stars to the rest of us just live here but it's, it's a really good concept but the story wasn't really that exciting so yeah then i have a really really pretty uk edition of uprooted by naomi novick i think this is kind of beauty and the beast retelling as well because i absolutely love beauty and the beast um but i think there's something to do with trolls in it too so it's really really interesting and it's got a gorgeous mint green spine so yeah and then I have The Sacred Lies of Minnow Bly by Stephanie Oakes. Hashtag Scandal by Sarah Ockler. And then I have the, again, a gorgeous edition of My True Love Gave to Me Christmas Stories, edited by Stephanie Perkins. And to the next pile, I have The Name of the Wind and The Wise Man's Fear by Patrick Rothfuss. Asylum by Madeline Rue. The Under the Never Sky trilogy by Veronica Rossi. Under the Never Sky, Through the Other Night and Into the Still Blue. Falling Kingdoms by Morgan Rose. The Shadow Queen by CJ Redwine. Catch Up Clouds and My Sister Lives on the Mantelpiece by Annabelle Pitcher. 
and Trouble by Non Pratt. And I also have another Querners Crafts by it, which is a little unicorn with a pink mane and tail and horn and feet. So yeah, she's super cute too. On to the next shelf, I have The Kiss of Deception by Mary E. Pearson. The Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children trilogy by Ransom Riggs. Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children, Hollow City and Library of Souls. And then I have Eleanor and Park by Rainbow Rowell, Fangirl by Rainbow Rowell, The Winner's Curse, The Winner's Crime and The Winner's Kiss by Marie Rutkowski, Fire and Flood and Salt and Stone by Victoria Scott, and The Bone Season and the Mime Order by Samantha Shannon. I also have this little Squirtle figure right here because he's my favourite Pokemon and he's really, really cute. So, yep. <laughs> Moving back on, I have Carry On by Rainbow Rowell, which I keep meaning to get to because I've heard really good things about. I have Landline by Rainbow Rowell. And then I have, obviously, the line of my Harry Potter Funko Pops and my Harry Potter books behind them. So I have, um, obviously, I have the Hogwarts Library books. I have Quidditch Through the Ages, Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them, and The Tales of Beedle the Bard. And then I have my hard covers my uk original hard covers so i'm not going to go through all the names but you guys know what they are and there they are and then on the end just because i have more space i have anna and the swallow man by gabriel savitt i also have a couple of books up here one of them i'm not going to show you for various reasons but the other one is a french edition of the Philosopher's Stone, Harry Potter à l'école de sorcière, and I bought this with the intention of improving my French. So um, when I am finally in the mood for doing that, I'm going to flick through this because it's a book that I know well, and therefore a book that I feel I know well enough to be able to understand in French, and it, hopefully it will be able to improve my French, because I do speak a little bit of French. I have an A-level in French, so I do know a little bit of it, but uh, yeah, I want to improve it, so yeah. And finally, on the last shelf, I have, it's getting dark down here because it's it's in the dark, even though I have all the lights on in the world and it's light outside. So I can't really light this any better. So I'm very, very sorry. And then I have, um, they all fall down by, who's the author of this? It says Sinclair on the spine. Roxanne Sinclair, that's it. That is a book about a group of girls in a high school. And um, basically they are all on a list to be killed. Um, they're on a list of popular girls in the school, I think. And one by one, someone is picking them off. So I'm really excited to be getting to that. It sounds kind of a darker version of Mean Girls to me. Then I have my Barnes & Noble edition of Dracula by Bram Stoker. I absolutely love this. So I'm just going to get it out and show you because, as I said, it's pretty dark down there. I have read this and it's absolutely gorgeous. Um, it has that kind of old look to the spine. I love it. It's just so, so pretty. Put it back. And then if we get right on in there, you can see Faceless by Alyssa Scheimel. That was in my, a recent book called mine, possibly my January or February book haul. And then I have All the Rage by Courtney Summers and the Daughter of Smoke and Bone trilogy by Lainey Taylor. Daughter of Smoke and Bone, Days of Blood and Starlight and Dreams of Gods and Monsters. Then I have the Slated trilogy by Terry Terry, Slated, Fractured and Shattered. Then I have this pretty edition of Ballet Shoes by Noel Stretfield. I'm going to get this out too. You see it's got the little bow on it like that. If I just flatten that out a little bit more. There we go. It is absolutely gorgeous. I just had to have it. And again, this is another childhood favourite that I loved. Emma Watson, a young Emma Watson's actually in the film adaptation of that if you haven't seen it. So I recommend watching that. Um, My American Edition of An Ember in the Ashes by Sabata here. The Merciless by Daniel Vega. That is a book. It's a YA book about some girls in a cult. Um, and it's supposed to be quite creepy. Um, I will show you the cover. See, it's all nice and pink, but it's it's really, really creepy. And it says inside it, for mature audiences only. So I am going to actually be reading this this Halloween. Because I meant to read it last Halloween, but I just didn't get around to it. So, yeah, that is that. And then I have It's Kind of a Funny Story by Ned Vizzini. The Dark Inside by Rupert. Rupert Wallace, that's his name. <laughs> uh, the Dark Inside. This is an exclusive signed edition. So, yeah. 
And then onto the last pile of paperbacks I have We All Looked Up by Tommy Wallach, The Strange and Beautiful Sorrow of Ava Lavender by Leslie Walton, My Heart and Other Black Holes by Jasmine Walker, Time Travelling with a Hamster by Ross Welford, and all the Scott Westerfeld books, Afterworlds by Scott Westerfeld, and his Ugly trilogies, Uglies, Pretties, and Specials. And then underneath that, I also have my illustrated edition of The Philosopher's Stone. When I have all of the illustrated editions, I'm going to have to find a different home for them because I don't want them all to be sitting in the dark. But right now, that's the best place for that book. So that is that. And that is all for my bookshelf tour. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, as I said, the books in the piles next to me in my videos will be in another video coming up later this week. So I hope you're all having an awesome day. All of my social media will be at the bottom as it is in all of my videos. And I will see you very soon for another video. Bye bye.